Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I have a first one, an overhaul story. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it, but before we go right into it, I would like to remind you to like the video, or dislike it if you don't, and comment something down below and watch the video until the end. If you do one, if you do at least three of these things, you enhance my standing in the YouTube algorithm. And the higher my standing in the YouTube algorithm, you know, the more people watch my stuff and the more money YouTube pays me. I also have a Patreon and if you cannot support me there, well, maybe thanks to your uh, liking my video and commenting something down below, somebody that can support me on Patreon will start watching my videos. So it all comes together. So please help me in doing that. Uh, lastly, what also helps is fan art sharing the video on other social media and uh, making fan art. If you have any fan art you'd like to show me, I have a Discord. You can just post it there. Uh, lastly, I'm okay with any kind of fan art, even hate fan art and Rule 34 fan art. So, you know, if you want to give me the time of day, you can draw me. Uh, well, however you want. Now let's get right into the show, shall we? Quirk Enhancers One might say that just hearing these words would mean that they are illegal medicine meant for the older generation, whose quirks aren't as advanced as younger people's. But that couldn't be further from the truth. They were illegal drugs, used by criminals, villains and other shady people to make their dealings simpler or to cause more collateral damage when there really was no way out to at least ruin the reputation of a pursuing hero and or to give the police just that much more paperwork. You were at the center of a small drug running ring which meant the supplier. After you had realized the financial benefits your quirk had, there was no way around it. Your quirk was called Blue Blood, and as the name suggested, it did turn your blood blue. When you first were told that that was your quirk, you were understandably devastated. It wasn't offensive or defensive, which essentially meant that a hero career was out of the question. But, in actuality, what the doctors didn't know, or maybe even actively hid from you, is the effect injecting your blood into other people had. Your blood would immediately and aggressively destroy and replace any red blood cells, giving the person who was injected with your quirk a pale blue skin color. Eventually, the body's own metabolism would replace the blue blood with regular red blood cells, so the effect lasted 12 hours at best. But during this time, the quirk of whoever you injected would go ballistic. A guy working under you once said that quirks become better over time, and that your blood advanced a person's quirk by roughly 200 years. People became almost unstoppable. Of course, when you started going into the criminal underbelly, people ignored you. You weren't a fighter, and lacked certain leadership skills. That was until you met the Yakuza. Unknowingly, he had been intruding on their turf, which had led to a few brawls between your underlings and their henchmen. The people who worked for you were kids, dropouts and homeless. They didn't want much off the cut and were the only ones taking you somewhat serious. So when the big criminal organization put pressure on you, you were the first to give in. With a heavily pounding heart, you had put on your most elegant businesswoman dress and sheepishly were led into one of their compounds. At least they granted you a bodyguard, a dropout from a high school, a young man named Agira. You knew full well that the Yakuza didn't want you to leave, 
he would not leave. But at least this one friendly face was enough to not immediately break under the pressure. The two of you were led into a warehouse in the port. It was empty, save for four white plastic chairs under a singular light bulb. Two of the seats were already taken by two men. This was the first time you had met Shizaki Kai, alias Overhaul. After sitting down, he looked you up and down. After sitting on the chair, he looked you up and down. Huh. He spoke. When I first heard about kids selling drugs in my territory, I didn't expect a woman to be behind it. You gulped. He sighed dismissively. That, of course, changes things... slightly. You opened your mouth to speak, but only a whimper escaped you. You're afraid. I got that. Chisaki was wearing a long coat. His hands were covered by gloves, and most of his face was hidden behind a mask. Maybe that was why you felt so intimidated. You have a cute little organization. He chuckled darkly. <laughs> Barely worth any effort. But quirk enhancers of such quality are not expected from backyard thugs like you. Akira grunted. He was getting upset. Shut your dog up, or I put him down for you. Slowly you turned your head and forced a smile. P please don't upset him. The boy sighed. Fine, sorry. I just hate being talked down to. He said barely audible. Um, c c can you wait outside? You asked the Yakuza boss sheepishly. Overall was taken aback. No criminal acted like you. What was your deal? He whistled to his henchmen. God save for kid. I don't want anyone to interrupt us, including you. He leaned further to his subordinate. I think I'm getting a clue here. Chisaki was glad you couldn't see his evil smile behind the mask. And soon, it was just you and him in the warehouse. Do you run a charity? He asked bluntly. I... No, I'm... Uh, we're just trying to make money. So it was a charity. The man laughed. A genuine laugh. <laughs> it was creepy. Like listening to a video game villain who was about to do something horrendous. But he simply had to. With just this one sentence to Akira, he had figured you and your entire organization out. He pointed a finger at you. You pick up the dregs of society, give them hope, make them sell drugs and keep some of the profit. Do you understand what you are meddling with here? There are people who could snuff you out in an instant. Just because you took one step into the wrong neighborhood. You lowered your head. Tell me, where do you get the drugs from? You whimpered. I... I it, uh, uh, it's my blood. I'm listening. I, I take blood thinner and then take some of my blood out with a needle. My blood type is no negative, so everyone can receive it. My quirk does the rest. Temporarily advancing a person's quirk. The man immediately got on his feet and you shrieked. Good. Work for me. You blinked. What? 
work for me. He said slower, but more aggressive. I'll hire your underlings. All of them. And if they do a good job, I even keep them alive. Of course, if you decline. He threw a photo over to you. It depicted a freshly dug grave somewhere near a forest clearing. I told you where you can bury yourself. He hated being so aggressive to a woman. He actually found you really attractive. In reality, he just wanted to get to know you better. While also profit from your quirk, of course. To him, it seemed like a win-win. I mean, I don't have much of a choice, do I? You said trying to sound humored, but fear was clearly audible in your voice. And overall hungrily licked his lips. Days later, you were working in the basement laboratory in one of the Yakuza-owned houses. Your arm was attached to a machine that slowly sucked out your heavily thinned blood. You were dizzy from the pills, but surprisingly happy. Your little gang assimilated almost too perfectly into the criminal organization. And despite your pay being cut in half, it was nice knowing there was something bigger you could call upon if needed help. The only issues were the side effects. Your gums were bleeding every time you brushed your teeth. Whenever you had a nosebleed, it took over 10 minutes to go away. And you felt itchy all around. A small price to pay for financial independence, right? The door to the basement opened and you looked behind yourself. The first things you saw, black pants, black leather shoes, a large coat. Huh, what was Oval doing here? The man had rarely talked to you since you joined. Strange. He didn't greet you just quietly walked over to you. And eventually he just spoke up. Hey, he said. His tone sounded even more emotionless than usual. Oh, things. You smiled. I mean, there are problems, but I also think you treat me way better than you treat others. He exhaled sharply. That sounded like a confirmation to your theory. You scratched over your itchy shoulder. Why are you here? The big Saikai guy? Don't you have more important matters to attend to? He shrugged. I have to admit. He said finally after a minute of agonizing silence. There's something about you. You blinked. I mean, yeah. You pointed at the tubes going into your arm. That's not what I mean. He sighed heavily. Uh, I tried getting you out of my head. When we first met, I... I was immediately attracted to you. To tell you the truth, that never happened to me before. You just barely suppressed gasping. Instead, your mouth turned into a curious smile. It's your lips, he said. They're red. So beautifully red. Like a perfectly grown rose. It's not lipstick if you think that. It was probably your clouded mind that made you not fully understand what he was talking about. And he chuckled. <laughs> no. I know. I mean that you are attractive and I think I like your caring personality a lot. Your muscles relaxed. You didn't even realize you had been tensed up since he came in. I find myself thinking of you when I should be focused on negotiations. In fact, 
Thinking of you almost blew a business discussion I had with a villain organization a few days ago. He chuckled darkly. Uh, boss? Are you saying you like... like... me? It was hard to you to form these words. Yes. I would like to be in a relationship with you. Outside of work, of course. You blinked. While you felt happy, you still didn't fully understand. While you felt happy, you still didn't fully understand. Uh, I mean, we can go on a date first. He looked you straight in the eyes. He honestly thought you'd decline. And then you'd be forced to be more drastic. I want to know more about you. Maybe find out if we share any interests. A warm smile decorated your lips. You didn't see it because of the mask, but... Overhaul was blushing happily.